behind me. Good to see you. <laughs> I just had to do that. Uh, Phil, Mr. Rogers, what a beautiful man. Hey, gang, I'm back again. Um, hey, let me know at some point. I used to do a cooking thing, like a little, it was called Cooking for Joe, like a little show I had for a while. So I just made up this beautiful soup with uh, last night in my crock pot with some hot peppers, some green peppers, um, tomatoes, big chunks of garlic, onions, red pepper, potato, organic meat, crushed tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, a little bit of secret spice that I won't tell you about because it's just so good. You have to pay me for that. So, remember, eat well. Oh, it's got the black beans in it, the kidney beans, so, mmm. That's just good, good stuff. So we'll just put this away, just, just a nice reminder. Keep yourself eat, eating healthy. So hey, you know, I have a couple of little lessons to hang out with you. And we're, we're going to see how it goes. Actually, one of them, I got this really cool lime. And I'm going to... And this is for my ceramic kids, okay? You know, when we were just about to start making our vessels, our clay vessels, well, one of the things I always just, you know, you all, I always say like a good cake can't be fixed with a, with a pink frosting or a, a, a nice frosting, that the cake in itself has to be good. Well, in sculpture, I really like to think about that. Sculptures should really exist, form, texture, gesture, positive, negative space, you know, all those basic elements. And the surface design. So. One of the things I wanted to do with you guys is we were going to um, use some of the, the colored slips and the, and we were going to do what's called scraffito. So one of the things that I've done, and actually uh, I've seen people who do food decorations, this lime is a beautiful, beautiful green. So what I want to do is I'm going to take a nice razor blade later in, a, in, a, in the next lesson, and I'm going to do a design by cutting off the surfaces of this. A lot of you have done it with pumpkins, you know? So, but... I'm going to try to make a nice little thing out of this, a nice little sculpture, kind of like one of our little um, pinch pots. You know, remember I was talking about you can make pinch pots into whistles, but we can also make them into nice, really nice egg shakers. So I was going to take this little um, lime, cut really thinly off the dark green, peel it off, and then have a nice design. I may even just let it dry, because that's kind of cool when you get those these dry fruits, you know, put them in a bowl. They just look really beautiful. So if I carve a design in that, that could be very much... Um, apply to our ceramic sculpture class that that I have because we don't have clay, right? Um, so anyways, that's wicked cool. It's an organic lime I got. Now, um, oh, I should put this lid on my... So. All right, so what I'm going to do here, you know, when I was a kid, many, many years ago, when I was a little boy, we used to um, have to go outside and play all the time. And back in the day, you know, I had AM radio, we had an AM radio, but no one had one, you know, it was in the car. And we never really had any ways to communicate except yell across the street, you know. And when we wanted to meet each other, we would be like, have to call on a phone. And it was kind of cool, right? In the olden days, there would be a phone and you had a cord about this long. So when you were sitting on the phone, everybody in the house, your mom, everybody knew what you were talking about. And um, so you had no, no real privacy in the house. And... You know, parents could really um, understand what your agendas were for the evening. And uh, that's kind of a good thing when I reflect back on it. But then there was this moment in time, right, when all of a sudden you could buy an extra long cord. So all of a sudden the cord would be six feet, which means you could grab the phone off the wall or off the counter, because it was stuck there, <laughs> you didn't get to walk around with it. And you could walk around the corner and have a little conversation with, with someone. I can remember, you know, especially... Junior high, when you're starting to like meet people and kind of get out on your own, you kind of want to have some privacy when you're talking. Everybody knows about that, right? You want privacy. Everybody deserves a little bit of privacy. Um, but, and then I can remember when all of a sudden we had cords that'd be like 12 feet long. And it was all this little stretchy cord that kind of boing, boing popped out. So you could really, you sometimes we'd have to go, like I have eight brothers and sisters, seven eight brothers and sisters, right? So if you wanted to have a conversation, and you got on the phone, you could actually walk down the hallway, <laughs> hide in the closet, or go into the bathroom and close the door, and no one could hear what you're saying. Oh, by the way, keep hydrated. My kombucha. Um, keep hydrated. 
because that's going to really, if you keep hydrated, that's going to keep you healthy. To eat your soups. Make up a nice crock pot soup. Boy, I made a beautiful crock pot soup last night. It's going to be all week long. I'm going to be eating this, and the peppers are going to get all the blood flow. So anyway, get back to com communication. So when we were little kids, right, one of the coolest things you could get would be a walkie-talkie. I don't know if you guys use these. All right, so... And when you talked on, you used to have to say over and out or Roger, and that kind of meant like you understood what someone was saying. So, hey there. Right, let me turn up the volume on this. All right, isn't that cool? Uh, hey there. Hey, Terry. You want to go and uh, go, go build a fort? Over and out. Yeah. Oops, let's get that volume up. Yeah, hey, I think that's a really great... Oops, not communicating. Let's go. Oh, hey, hello. Check one, two. Channel one, channel one. Let's try that again. Ooh, check. Hello, Terry. Yeah. Hello, check one, two. Yeah, hello. Check one, two. Check one, two. So, yeah, there you go. Check one, two. Yeah, Roger, over and out. So we would do Roger over and out. And these, these go, I tested them the other day. They'll go maybe a quarter mile away. Be really good if you had open fields, like when we were kids and we wanted to like run in the woods and stuff, or in the fields, you could communicate maybe an hour or a mile away, maybe. So, this is kind of cool. So that was the olden days. Back when I was a little boy, back when they called me T-Bird. I was my grandma. And then, if you were wicked cool, like in high school, we used to have the CB radios and um, the ham radios. You have a someone that have a ham radio and big antenna on the roof. I had a good friend of mine in Pawtucket. Ah, Pawtucket, huh? Goes with the days. And they had a, a, a radio in the house, you know, almost like a scanner type radio. And we would have kids, we would be in our cars and we'd have our CB radios, you know, like the truckers use. So I got this. This is a really good, actually, a good thing to have around. This is a, a scanner radio, so I can listen to the weather, I can listen to the harbor master, emergency, stuff like that. So this is really good if all the technology is um, temporarily down or whatever. So this is a nice way to hear about, um, particularly up here, we get a lot of like crazy weather up here. So this is really nice. And um, we like to listen to the lobster men and the harbor master and stuff. And if there's an emergency, sometimes people get hurt, hurt on the bearskin neck and you don't want roomies flying. So you can listen in on, on these radios and this is really kind of neat. You can get the, all the different kind of bands. Um, so anyways, that's another way. So. But when we were little, little, little kid children, actually, I should be showing you. Yeah, there you go. See, isn't that kind of cool? So these are these are like thirty-five bucks. This is like one hundred and fifty bucks nowadays. Um, so, anyways, we'll put these over here. We don't need to have them in the way. So, what we used to do when we were little kids, my dad taught this, and I kind of thought it would be a neat project, a fun project to do with your family. And just kind of get back to the old school stuff, right? So what I have here, I have some fishing line, okay? Now, actually, what's so cool about this fishing line is one of our sons, Dylan. Dylan, me boy. He made this for me. He was a, he had a, he got a biology degree out at um, Ohio Wesleyan. And then he decided to go out on ships for a while. So he's a, uh, a, a fisheries inspector for NOAA where they go out and, Make sure that people aren't, you know, spearing orca whales and stuff like that. And, you know, they do the fish count so we know um, how we're um, harvesting the sea appropriately. So that's wicked cool. Um, tough, tough job, man. I mean, he's been in boats out in the, the ocean 2,000 miles offshore for months at a time. And he's been on American ships, Japanese ships, Chinese ships, Brazilian ships. He's been all around the world. Wicked cool. So sometimes on those ships... Um, the food wouldn't be all that great, quite honestly. So he would have he would actually just go out and fish for himself. So he, he would make instead of a big old fishing pole, he'd get one of these. It's just a, like a you know handmade third world fix I always call it. And then he put this little yeah we'll put it and then he put this little hooky thing on here so he could change hooks and he would just drop it down and get and fish for for mahi mahi and stuff like that. Especially originally started off of uh, Hawaii um, when he first started doing his fisheries inspectors inspections now he's a firefighter out in the woods he's one of them hot shot firefighters like the marine guys who go into the into the woods dylan's the man there was dylan's dylan's unbelievable i love that boy love all my kids all my kids are just hard working kids they all like to work hard they all like to 
to be self self sufficient kids. It's kind of cool. Um, so, anyways, he gave me this when he left because when we go fishing around here, sometimes I'm out on my kayak, kayaking around, and I don't have poles and stuff. So I can just drop this down in and try and cook myself a little fish. So, anyways, I'm going to be using this um, to make a phone, believe it or not. And you might have seen the movie Johnny Cash, beautiful movie. You should check it out if you haven't. Beautiful book. And actually, Greg Laurie um, wrote a beautiful book on Johnny Cash. You might want to check it out. His name's Greg Laurie. He also wrote a beautiful book about Steve McQueen. But in the movie about Johnny Cash, there's a scene at the very end of the movie with this. And it just brought me, guys like me and gals like me my age, just brought us back. And um, so what we do is, right, and I might have shown you to some of the kids in the past at school. So I'm going to decorate this later, but I want to show you how to make a phone. And you, especially if you're a babysitter and you babysit kids and stuff, and you were like, what the heck are we going to do with these kids instead of sitting them in front of some like Disney uh, movie or whatever, you know? Make a phone. Build one of them tents out, <laughs> build one of them tents out of their bed sheets. But anyways, what we do, hello, hello, see how that has an echo, right? So what I'm going to do, I am going to get my little handy dandy drill out my beautiful Praxin drill. I have a very small drill bit in here and I'm going to drill a hole in the center of this, okay? Now it's a very small drill bit. And I have such a skinny little drill bit it doesn't... There we go. That's the way, uh, like I was saying, you never force a tool, right? Oh, I'm going to get a bigger one. We have to go nice and mellow. Okay, let it get a little starter hole. Ah, better. And I'm gonna do a third one. Okay, there we go. Now I actually have some oil for that. You always want to oil up your drills um, as you use them so you don't um, get horror. Okay, so now. What I got, I got here is like, you know, one of my typical pin tools that I have, you know. And I'm going to make this hole a little bit bigger. I don't want it too much bigger. But I want to be able to fit that, that. There we go. Got that down. See? Okay. Do another one. Also, you know, when I do this stuff, I like to kind of keep my hands really close together. Because if, if you slip with a tool and your hands are way out here, your elbows, shoo, you can really hurt yourself. So... The closer to your core when you're working with tools, the better, particularly when you get, get into like, when you get to carving on your little um, lemons and stuff and maybe a pumpkin. It's just nice to hold your tools here. Don't carve from here because if you slip, your tool's going to go like four inches and that could go into your hand. So just like in the movie The Patriot, aim small, miss small, right? Okay, so now there's another little hole on that one. We'll take care of this one while I'm here. Okay, just going to get that in there nicey nice. Okay, all right, so... Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Okay. So now, I'm going to have to save this little piece of fishing line because I'm going to hook this up as soon as the weather breaks. I'll be having my kayak back on the rack and I'll be out there on the boat. All right, so what we do. Now, you know, because in just go, hey, you know, this would be a great, like, extra credit science project, you know. Um, I'm going to get this long enough. You know how when we speak, it's a vibration, right? All sound comes has a wave, right? So, what we do is, as I speak into this, you can hear the little vibration. By tying this knot into this little can, right? What's going to happen is, I'm going to do this on both ends. This is so much fun. I was a babysitter to high school. I was one of my only friends who had money, right? I had a paper route when I was in 6th, 7th grade. Me and my brother Bill. And then uh, when I had a babysit, I babysat two, three. Monday afternoons for, were for Harry Farrell, if you're out there and you ever see this. I had a babysitting job with Harry Farrell and, um, and Jolie Silversmith. Gosh, I can't remember. I, believe, I can't believe I remember those names. So No, no Monday I would have Jolie. And Tuesday and Thursday nights I would go over to Harry Farrell's and I would... Babysit. So uh, you have to come up with that, with things to do with them, right? All right. So I got a little little thingy going on in there. 
Now I'm going to take the big one because I'm really curious to see how this one's going to sound. Right. Now what I'm planning on doing, I got all these really kind of cool colored markers. They're uh, because it's going to go more metal. They're those permit markers, right? You might even have some of them in your house. So there we go. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Okay. So now, actually, you know what I'm going to need to do, so I can demonstrate this properly, I need to make it an arm's length. But we could go all the way across the yard with this. All right. So I'm going to just cut this off right here. It will make a short one. If I had an assistant, I could probably, you know, you, we used to take this and go all the way across the room. Um, there's a couple of movies out there, you know, kind of like coming of age type movies where kids would live in one house and their neighbor would have another house and the kids would string this between the two, the two rooms. I mean, you could live, you could hang out the window and talk to each other, but it's just kind of fun. Hello. Hey, check that out. So, now, if you had this on your ear, let's see what happens. Hey there, how you doing? I'm talking to you from right over here, vast distances away, okay? Let's see what this one sounds like. Ooh. Ooh. The long arm of the law. Check that out, see that? So what you need to do is you have the, 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 the string. When we were little kids, we actually used to use um, thread, but it kind of breaks when you get a little aggressive. So there you go. So now I'm talking to you. Now, if you had this up on your ear, you could hear each other. And it's just a fun game to play, you know. So anyways, that's the telephone back in the day. We used to have the telephone back in the day, so I wish we could prove this to you. Be able to latch it over there. And I could walk way back here and speak into this, and you could hear it. See, but the thing is, as soon as you let the tension go, the vibration just gets lost in the can. So you have to have a nice taut. And that's why I like fishing string. Nice taut string. Now the vibration's going down the the string, and then coming out the other end as a speaker. There you go. Check it out, huh? Okay, so now it's decoration time. So I think what I'll first do, now one of the things I was gonna do later, and I just might do this, but I don't wanna, I know you guys got lots of work to do. I'm gonna wrap these up. That was the other thing, you could wrap them up in paper and glue it down and then do a cool little design on it. I, I might just do that later on and then just show you in the after it's done, because I don't wanna waste your time. But well, I'm gonna make a nice little, little, Peace sign or something. I always, you know me, peace, love, dove. Right, let's just draw it right over here. So I made a little surround circle. Hey, you know, for my digital imaging kids, right? For communication. You know how we were working on our logos before? Maybe, maybe you're trying to redraw your logo on here. Your handle, as we used to call it when we were kids, you'd have a handle for your CB radios and stuff. And the truckers, what's your handle? T man. All right, yeah. So check that out. Right? <laughs> it's simple, and I'm gonna, I could, I'll spend time later on. Got the peace sign, man. Peace out, bro. All right, so. Oh, it's actually a chicken. <laughs> the chicken. Chicken walk. Check it out, baby. So there you go. That's the phone. All right. So there you go. That's my lesson for the day. I think it's a pretty simple one. Um, I'm going to actually do a really cool little time. I'm going to take some time with this. And, uh, you know, again, I'm always like wicked tribal type stuff. You know, simple line, simple design. I'm not a big drawing artist. You know what I mean? I've always been a craftsman. So just to just to give me something to do, I mean, passing the time. Again, instead of sitting in front of that boob tube, that's what we used to call it, because you're sitting around looking like a boob. The boob tube. The tell a vision. Why not have your own a vision? <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, how come it's called programming? Television programming. You know? A channel. Programming a channel. Uh -huh. Words are interesting. It might be interesting to look up those words. What is a channel? What is who's programming? Are you being fed? It's a great movie. Um, it's actually won an Academy Award called Network News. So famous with Faye Dunaway. She Faye Dunaway, Dunaway, Dunaway. Great actors won the Academy Award for the movie and stuff. It's actually about TV programming. And actually, you know that movie when the, or that commercial when the, for bondage when they all open up the windows. I'm not gonna take it anymore. <laughs> that movie or that commercial. That's from the network movie. That's what that's from. If they took it because um, everybody was like felt like they were being um, fed information rather than um, being given real information. So everybody opened up the windows and was like, oh, I'm not going to take it anymore. <laughs> that was 1971, by the way. Check it out. Let's make a most of this beautiful day. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? All right, gang, I'm just going to head out. Do my little Mr. Mr. Rogers thing with his jacket. I need a sweater. Put on my sweater. All right. Ciao, babies. Back to you. Because I did a little, spent a little bit of time decorating, a little bit of time doing my schoolwork. <laughs> you know, I just have this simple candle. I got out my black mark, my indelible markers. I just wanted to share this with you. It's kind of like a little lion face. Lion of Judah. So that would make it a little bit more fun. Now I use the permanent markers so that way it won't rub off on my hands. You know, um, if you use regular old watercolor markers, it'll beat up on the metal. So now I have a little bit, you know, simple decoration. I like the, actually the little glowing silvery quality to it. So I just thought I'd share that as a, as a finished result. And um, go talk to somebody on the phone. Oh, hey, you know what? Another thing I'm going to do is something so much fun. Look it up on YouTube. It's easy. Like I said, I'm going to carve these. But also, remember those? I don't know if you've ever done this. See, you kids are into this whole little thumb game. When you were kids, you can make a little crabby face you know, or an apple face, crab apple face. So what you do is I'm going to carve this. I'm going to carve this up into a little face, right? Then you let it dry out. And then I'll have a little little crabby face person. Then I can make it as a little sculpture-y, puppet -y thing. So those are going to be the next two projects for sculpture. And again, I'm thinking for my, uh, my clay kids, how do you use materials and shape it, right? Rather than... Uh, oh, hey, anyways. Oh. Hey, hey. <laughs> Any okay? Ha <laughs> ha!